All right, and here we are for part two of lecture 27 of CENG 3325 structural analysis. So in the previous portion of the lecture, we looked at applying uh, the force method to trusses. Next, I would like to look at applying the force method to frames. Uh, force method frames. This is not going to be so different for, from applying to trusses. And really, we are going to be using the same basic process of selecting a redundant and balancing, uh, and balancing uh, deformations. So let's consider an example here. Again, I'm going to be doing a qualitative rather than a quantitative example. So let us say we have a frame like this. And let's put a roller down here. Uh, something like this, a fixed support on the left-hand side, and a roller here. Then let's apply some uh, loads to this. Let's say we had a, uh, let's say a distributed load W here, and maybe a point load P here. <clears throat> and let's then label some points. Let's say I have points A, B, and C. Points A, B, and C. And then let's go ahead and say we have, oh, maybe reaction forces. Let me go ahead and do that in red for consistency. Maybe we have AX, AY, and then a moment at A, MA. And then a CY. So how would we handle this? Well, first of all, I need to determine my degree of indeterminacy. So step one, my degree of indeterminacy, well, I have three reactions here and one reaction here. Uh, for a single rigid body, this is going to be indeterminate to the first degree. Uh, first degree indeterminate. Now, I could choose a variety of methods for uh, finding, uh, or for, I could choose a variety of different redundant forces, but uh, depending on what I do, I would get different results, or not different results, but some would be more problematic than others. Uh, let's see, I wouldn't want to remove my AX because that would make my structure in motion when I tried to analyze the, uh, when I tried to analyze the real loads. If I remove the AX, there'd be nothing holding this thing uh, in place in the horizontal direction, so my thing would go flying off into space, and that would be problematic. I could perhaps remove the AY, and that would work fine, um, but removing the CY would cause problems because I wouldn't have any deformation in the column. But I think good choices would be either the AY or the moment at A. So this here, I'm going to choose perhaps, uh, maybe I'll choose the, at the moment at A, the fixed support basically, as my redundant. So here, I choose the moment at A as my redundant. Uh, as a redundant. As my redundant force. Or I should probably say redundant reaction. So my second step would be to analyze my, uh, would be to analyze my now statically determinate system. Or to analyze the system, uh, analyze frame uh, with redundant removed and real loads present. and real loads present. So consider this. If I remove that reaction force, or that if I remove that uh, moment force, that moment reaction, I'm going to have a pin here, and then a roller down here. A roller down, and I'll, I'll go ahead and draw this as my classic roller skate. And points A, B and C. And then the reactions, my N they would be gone, but I would have a X and a Y. A X and a Y. And I would still have all of my real uh, all the real loads that were on the original structure. Those aren't going to change for step two anyway. I would have point I would have force P and distributed load W. Now, so the question is, what am I going to be looking for? Well, 
because I was looking for, or because I removed a a force or a reaction, a moment reaction, I want to make sure to analyze a rotation. So um, thinking about this, if I'm going to apply a unit couple uh, counterclockwise here, that by itself would tend to cause this uh, beam to bend upward. So maybe I'm going to go ahead and assume, uh, maybe I'll go ahead and uh, find the angle, uh, something like this. Well, actually, we can go ahead and just find the angle theta here under the real one. And so this would have a deflected shape. Well, what would this do? This would go down and out. So joint C would be over here somewhere. And maybe we'd end up with a deflected shape. Something, oh, like we'd want to have a right angle. So maybe something kind of like this uh, under the loads here. And so I would want to find this, uh, and I would want to use a capital theta to be consistent here, uh, capital theta A naught. Capital theta A naught, this would be the rotation uh, at A due to the real loads, due to real loads with redundant removed. Uh, with the redundant removed. So basically saying if these loads are not present, or sorry, if the moment is not present, the real loads are going to cause this joint here to rotate by some angle theta. And then we'll basically be asking, okay, well, what kind of moment will be necessary to counteract that rotation? So secondly, I'm going to analyze the structure. I'm going to analyze the structure uh, using the or applying a unit uh, moment at the location where I removed my uh, redundant. So analyze structure, or analyze frame in this case. Uh, analyze the frame with a uh, unit moment, or unit load, at location and in direction of the redundant. And in direction of the redundant. In direction of the redundant. So here, let's say we have this and this here. So a roller here and a pin here. And I would apply a unit load uh, like so. Maybe like this in the direction of the, and I'm going to apply this in the direction that I assume, that I assume uh, the moment is in. So I assumed previously that MA was clockwise, or counterclockwise, or positive, so I'm going to apply a one, uh, a unit load, or a unit couple here. And of course, like we've done previously, uh, this needs to be consistent with whatever units you have. Uh, so if I was doing this in KSI, for example, I would want to apply a unit of one kip inches. Or I could apply, if my lengths were in feet, I could apply a unit load of one kip foot or a couple of one kip foot or uh, Newton meters or whatever it might be for whatever unit system you have. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'll just analyze what kind of rotation I get from doing that. So my deflected shape is gonna look then, for this, my deflected shape might look something like this, maybe, and then something kind of like this. With my roller here, and so I would then calculate this theta here, and this theta would be like a lowercase theta a sub a, for example. Lowercase theta a sub a, this would be the rotation at a from a unit load applied at a. So theta a sub a would be a unit would be the rotation at a from a unit load applied at a. So theta a a, the rotation at a at A from unit load applied at A. From a unit load applied at A. Rotation at A from a unit load applied at A. So again, I apply unit load rotation or a unit uh, couple, and then I see, okay, what kind of rotation does that produce in the structure or in the frame without the uh, real loads present? Then let's consider step four here. Step four is going to be to balance the deformations. Balance deformations. And usually this is done at location of the redundant.
And for our um, problem here, we were dealing with moments and uh, couples and moments, couples, and rotations. So I would say something like theta, a naught, that is the deformation from the uh, real loads un uh, uh, with the redundant removed, plus the deformation from the unit load, oh, not a delta, a lowercase theta, a a, and then times the moment at a, uh, whatever that moment may be. And so again, this is basically saying, and, uh, and the, of course, is a fixed. This is a fixed uh, support, so we're saying the overall rotation may be zero or will be zero. So this is the rotation that the uh, real loads would produce. This is the rotation that a unit load applied in the direction of M A would be would produce. And so I know that this is simply going that the real M A is simply the ratio between these two things. Or if we had more uh, redundance than more than one redundant, then we would have to solve a series of equations to calculate. MA and any other um, any other uh, redundant forces, and you can get your MA or your redundant fairly easily. So you uh, then solve for your redundant, and so then finally you analyze your now determinate frame, or not determinate now determinate frame. So for example, uh, again, now determinant frame, applying the redundant reaction as a known force. The redundant re uh, reaction as an external force, or as a known external force. As a known external force. So here, for our frame in this example, we would treat this as a pin and a roller. Our pin and our roller. And we would have for loads, uh, we would have well, whatever the moment was, there would be an MA there. But it would not just be a generic MA, an unknown MA. We would actually have, we would actually know the value for it. And that value is what we're solving for here. And then we'd have an AX, an AY, we'd have our distributed load, whatever W that is. And we would have our force P here. Again, the real loads, and then we would have some sort of CY here. So this is now statically determinate. We have removed one of the redundants, or removed one of the supports, uh, one of the support reactions and replaced it with a known uh, variable or a known quantity, a known load. And so this thing is now fully statically determinate and we can solve for whatever we want. So we can solve for um, moment, shear, stress, strain, uh, deformation, deflection, rotation, whatever it is that you're looking for. deflection, rotation, etc. Whatever it is you're looking for, you solve for it there. Of course, the other thing to mention is though, how do we analyze these in these steps here? Well, just like we did with trusses, we solve for both of these using virtual work, or you could use other methods as well. But really, you can, you can solve for both of these using virtual work. Virtual work and virtual work. So, um, unlike the trusses where you would go and use your um, summation, here you would just use the integration techniques. You'd integrate, the, say, the moment and the axial force uh, in each of these as a function of x, and really it wouldn't be too bad. It'd be the same kind of things we've looked at previously when we have solved for uh, fault frames using the methods of virtual work. So this can be quite challenging in the fact that we need to go and apply virtual work twice, uh, once here, once here, and sometimes three times here, a third time here, um, depending on what we're looking for. So this can be a challenging method, but or can be an involved method, although really the techniques involved aren't terribly complicated. The virtual work method is used frequently to analyze these once you've reduced them to a statically determined system. So uh, what I really think of when I think of analyzing frames with virtual work, I see using uh, the, using uh, the force method, sorry, I really think of uh, this as 
applying the force method to break it into a series of statically determinate frames, and then analyzing each of those statically determinate frames using virtual work. And that really is the basic process. Uh, it, now, it, it conceptually, it isn't that difficult, although, of course, uh, actually doing this can be quite involved, especially if you're working through uh, virtual work three or four times, two, three, or four times. And every time you have a new redundant force, you're going to need a different um, virtual work system. So uh, I know that can be quite involved, but hopefully that is fairly straightforward. Hopefully you uh, get that. And that really is all I have to say in terms of the basic theory of solving frames using the force method. All right, hopefully that there's a little bit illuminating. Hopefully that does describe the process of applying. Uh, hopefully that adequately, descri adequately describes the process of applying uh, the force method to frames. Hope you all found this interesting. Hope you all found this illuminating. That will do it for today. I hope, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. If not, I will see you later. And as always, thank you.